What is up everybody? Welcome to the Game Night YouTube channel. In today's video guys, we are doing a tutorial and playthrough of Tin Realm, the newest installment by Jason Glover from Grey Gnome Games. The wait is finally over dudes, it is here. I'm so excited to get into this. So guys, you may know Jason Glover's other work. Uh, he made Iron Helm, he made Tin Helm, he made Desolate, Gates, Dust Runner, all kinds of amazing games, and he's back with his newest addition in the Tin series, Tin Realm. Now, Tin Realm takes place immediately after the events of Tin Helm. If you're not familiar, in Tin Helm, you go into a dungeon that is overrun by the Brotherhood of the Red Cloth. They've all been corrupted, and you're trying to look for the three shards in the dungeon in order to save the Brotherhood of the Red Cloth. Once you find all three of those shards and you've returned them to their former selves, your job in Tin Realm is to travel out of the dungeon onto the overworld and travel to the town of Oakenshelm to inform the Baron in Oakenshelm that you have saved the Brotherhood of the Red Cloth. So, it's pretty cool. You can play a round of Tin Helm, and then you can take out Tin Realm and continue your adventure. It's like a two-part game. Really, really cool stuff. So, we're going to get into it here, guys. we got the Tin right here. Move that out of the way, and uh, we'll get into how all of this stuff works in this tutorial, and then we'll play through the game as well. So, you're gonna notice up here, we have these four map cards. Now, these are double-sided. On one side of the map card, you'll see that there are three little nodules, like three little nodes that you can go to. On the opposite side of the card, there are four nodes you can go to, and that is the same case on all four of these map cards here. You've got four on the back of this one, and three on this one. This is so that you can set the difficulty of the game. So the more nodes that you have to travel over, the longer it's gonna to take to reach the finish and win the game. You'll notice too, on this first one, there is an S, that is the starting node. So you'll put your little meeple right there. And then on this card, there is an F for the finish. That is where you're trying to go. So the starting map tile will all, or map card rather, will always go on the left. And the finish map card will always go on the right and then the other two go in the middle and you just connect the roads on the card. So they're gonna be laid out the same every time, but as mentioned, you can flip those over to add you know, different amounts of nodes that you have to travel over. In this tutorial, we're gonna put it on the easy mode and we're gonna put it on three nodes per card. So we're traveling from here all the way through and trying to get to the finish line over there, which is Oakenshelm, so that we can inform the Baron that we have uh, freed the red cloth of their delirium from the, the shards and uh, that's how you win the game. Over this way, we've got a bunch of trackers, which we'll get into in a second. We also have the enemy deck over here, the loot deck, and then you've got your reference cards up this way. It's also really cool. I got the mat. It's got everything nice and laid out. If you don't want to get the mat, the tin does come with some tracker cards for your health, uh, food, energy, favor, um, the enemy health and the sundial up here. So you don't need the mat, but I highly recommend it. It's really, really cool stuff. Um, then we've got the exploration deck here, which is the main uh, driving mechanic of the game. We'll get to that in just a moment. And then you've got some characters here. You have three different character cards that you can pick from. There's a race on one side and a class on the other. And I will mention, if you own Tin Helm, you can mix and match. You can take your character cards from Tin Helm and you can play them in Tin Realm, which is amazing, and vice versa. You can take the three new characters from Tin Realm and play them in Tin Helm, which is just so cool. That is just really, really cool. So we got more characters in both games now. Um, so in this playthrough, I'm gonna choose the Wood Elf. That's the character that I'm gonna go with. We're gonna pick the Wood Elf, and then we're gonna play as the Ranger for the class. So we're gonna play as a Wood Elf Ranger. So the Wood Elf is going to start with seven health, and then the ranger starts with an additional four health. So you're gonna look at the heart symbol on both the race and the class, and you're gonna add those together, and that is your starting health. So seven plus four is 11. So we're gonna take our little red cube, and we're gonna put it on the 11 on the health tracker. Next, you're gonna look at the little lightning bolt symbol on each card. We've got nine on the wood elf, and three on the ranger. You add those together, it's 12. So we'll take our blue cube, and we'll put that on 12 on our energy tracker right here. And then finally, we'll check out the food. She starts with one food, which is denoted by this little ration symbol right here. So we'll take our orange cube and we'll put it on the one on the food tracker, just like that. Now, each character is also gonna have a special ability. In the case of the wood elf, it says, when resolving the grove, which is one of these reference cards over here, there's the grove, that's where you can find mushrooms. So anytime we go to the grove, the wood elf 
will get to gain one favor, which is tracked right here by this little white clear cube on the favor tracker. So anytime we go to the grove with the wood elf, we'll gain one favor. And it says she may also spend four favor to escape the labyrinth. And the labyrinth is also one of these cards over here. So anytime we are in the labyrinth, if we have four favor, we can spend it to escape the labyrinth rather than having to do what the labyrinth card says, which we might get into at some point in this tutorial. We'll see. Also, the ranger is going to start with the short bow and the raven. And you'll notice on all of these class cards, it'll tell you what your starting equipment is at the bottom. You'll start with two trappings. The game comes with three trappings cards that are double-sided. So in the case of the ranger, we're going to get the short bow and the raven. So we've got our short bow. We'll put that down this way in our inventory. And we'll start with the raven. We'll put that down in the inventory. And then the other trapping card we'll just set aside for now. We're not going to need it. All right, there we go. And then last but not least, on the class card, you'll notice there is this little uh, box right here that has three different numbers in it. This is how much damage you're going to inflict depending on how many energy you spend. So for this first one, if we spend one energy as the ranger, we'll do plus two damage to our attack. If we spend two energy, we'll do plus five damage. And if we spend three energy, we'll do plus seven damage. That is a lot of damage. That's pretty powerful stuff. Very cool. And then our trappings that we start with, of course, the short bow, it says attacks with the short bow deal one additional damage to enemies with armor. So anytime there's an enemy who has armor, let's see if we can find one real quick, such as the bone stalker here, you can see next to the little shield symbol, there is a one. If there's a value other than zero, if the enemy has armor, the short bow will deal one extra damage to those enemies. And then the raven trapping says once per dungeon level, you may spend one food to skip your enemy's turn to attack. So we can spend one of our food up here once per level or once per day, and we can skip an enemy's turn to attack. Now, the game is played in days. Each round is called a day. So you're going to have 12 of these exploration cards, and each turn you're going to be revealing two of the cards. And since there's 12 of them, that is going to equal up to six. So there's going to be six uh, locations that you visit, and once that's done, that'll be one full day of traveling. So you'll see up here in the top corner of the mat, there's this little sundial symbol, and it's got one through seven around it. So we're going to start on day one. So we're going to take our little yellow cube, and we're going to put that on the one on the sundial tracker. Every time we go all the way through the exploration deck and go through six locations, this little tracker on the sundial is going to move up to the next day. Now, this is important because if you ever reach the seventh day and you're not able to reach the finish by the end of the seventh day, you lose the game. So that's one way to lose the game. Another way to lose the game is if your health drops all the way down to zero. That's another way to lose. And a third way to lose the game, there's lots of ways to lose the game, is if your poison is ever equal to or greater than your health. And we'll get to that momentarily as well. So we got the sundial tracker set up. And um, also what the sundial tracker is going to represent too is how much extra health the enemies have. So on the first day, anytime you draw an enemy card, for instance, if we draw this top card, let's say we had to fight a Bane spider, you would look at the health. The Bane spider has four health, but since it's day one, he would have five health. If it was day four, for instance, you would add four to his health. So the Bane spider on the fourth day would have eight health. So the further, the further you go into the game, the more days that have passed, the harder the enemies are going to be. They're going to have more health as you move further into the game. So you're trying to get to this finish line to Oaken's Helm as fast as possible. Um, I guess it's worth going over the enemy cards too while we're talking about it. So it's pretty simple. It's going to have the name of the enemy, a cool little artwork done by Jason, and then it's got these four symbols on the card. The heart, of course, is the health. The sword shows how much extra damage the enemy is going to do in combat. The shield is its armor. That's how much damage it's going to mitigate. And the Ankh symbol shows you how much favor you acquire whenever you defeat the enemy. And then on every enemy card, there's going to be like a little text box down here that'll have a special ability for each enemy. So they all do different unique things. You got that. And of course, you got the loot deck. You'll go through the loot deck whenever you find loot in the game. And uh, you'll add that to your inventory over this way. And that's pretty much it, guys. The game is pretty much set up and ready to go. So we're going to go through some rounds so you can see how the game is actually played and how the game flows. So we're going to take our exploration deck. We are going to shuffle it up. And we're going to head into our first round 
of Tin Realm, guys. Tin Realm. I was about to say Tin Helm. I'm so used to saying Tin Helm. We're heading into our first day in Tin Realm, dudes. This is super exciting. Let's see what we get here. All right, so we've got the Pyramid. Hmm. So now, this is where the decision making comes into play, guys. So this is what you're going to do. This is how the exploration phase of the game works. You can either choose to resolve this first card or you can push your luck. Now at the pyramid, it's gonna show you down at the bottom of each card. It'll have these little symbols. There's different symbols down here. This treasure chest symbol means loot. So there could be loot here. Do we wanna do it? I don't know. That's kind of risky and I'll explain why. On the edges of each card, there are symbols. There could be four, one of four different symbols. It'll either be water, mountains, trees, or a skull. The skull is bad, and I'm going to show you why in just a minute. So I think I'm actually going to push my luck. So anytime you push your luck in the game, you're going to take the top card and you're going to flip it to its other side like this. This is going to be the result side of the card. You're going to see what the result is going to be. And then you will use the next card as the card that you're exploring. So we're exploring the Lost Spring. Had we done it the other way around, had I decided I did want to go to the pyramid, we would have set the pyramid down and then we would take the Lost Spring and flip that card over. But since we're going to push our luck here, we're going to take the pyramid, we're going to flip it, and then we're going to head to the Lost Spring. So now you look at the location card that you've chosen and you, uh, you do each one of these symbols in order from left to right. You'll resolve each one from left to right. So we've got a question mark. That is a random event. So we'll look at the result side of this card and the random event is the altar. So we'll come up here, we'll grab our reference card, we'll search for the altar. And the altar says, you may gain a blessing from the altar based on your current level on the favor tracker. Well, we're on zero. We haven't gotten any favor yet since we're just starting. So zero to three says we gain one health, but we haven't lost any health. And in Tin Realm, your, your maximum health that you have from your class and your race, it can never exceed whatever the, the starting health is. So we're at 11, so we can't gain any more than that. And same thing goes for your energy. Your energy can never exceed what your starting energy is. That's gonna be your maximum for the rest of the game. So uh, we don't need any blessing from the altar. The next symbol is the water drop symbol. The water drop symbol means that you can look for food. Anytime you have a water drop symbol, you can search for food. And the way that you do this is you roll 1d6, and if you roll a five or a six, you find food and any other roll, you don't find anything. So we didn't find anything in this case since we rolled a four. And then the final symbol on the lost spring is the campsite. Whenever you find a campsite, you have one of two options that you can pick. You can either rest, which means that you'll gain two health and one energy, or you can search for food, which means that you'll gain one food. Considering we're already at full health and full energy, we're gonna do the search option and we're gonna gain one food moving up to two on our food tracker. And that is it. We have completed the Lost Spring. So now this is really cool. This is where some of the unique stuff in Tin Realm comes into play. You're gonna take the Lost Spring and you're gonna set it up here and you're gonna create a tableau of locations. Now, since this is the first one, we can just place it anywhere up here. We'll take our other card that uh, we used to have the results and we'll put that over here in a discard pile. Now, this is where these little symbols are gonna come into play. On the left side of the spring, there's forest, there's trees, and on the right side, there's mountains. So if we ever match up these symbols, if I were to find another location and it had a mountain on the left and I placed that here and it, it created a full circle with the mountains, we would get to move one space on the map. We would take our little meeple and we'd move them to the next node on the map. So that's one way that you can move through the map. Because remember, we're trying to move around this map here and get to the finish. That's how you win the game. Um, you can also play cards down to where the symbols don't match, but you just won't get to move on the tracker. And if you ever place... <laughs> two cards where the, the two halves of a skull match up, you lose half of your health and you have to move backwards three nodes on the map. That is really, really brutal, but apparently it's pretty rare for that to happen. So um, yeah, that's why I wanted to skip the pyramid in the beginning because it's got a skull on each side. So I was like, I think I'm just gonna skip that and get it out of the way. Now you know why, you lose half your health and you gotta move backwards three spaces on the map. We definitely don't want that. So. Um, having these little symbols on the cards, it kind of, it, not kind of, it absolutely influences your decision on which locations you want to resolve. So unlike in Tin Helm, you're not looking at just the, uh, the, um, the outcomes that could happen or the, uh, the symbols down here that could happen. 
you're also looking at these little symbols on the side to figure out, is it worth going here to move on the map or not? So there's more decision making that takes place here. And I really, really love that. It adds another level, another layer of decision making. So we've got the obelisk up next. You can see it's got the water and it's got a skull, but we don't have water or a skull. And I really want to start moving around the map. So even though there is loot, I'm going to go ahead and skip this one. So we're going to push our luck. We're going to take this card and flip it to its result side. And we're going to go to the next card here, the next location. And we've got Bone Rock. That is cool. I want to, I want to mention too, it, Jason's artwork in all of his games is incredible. But I especially like this black and white sort of like pen and ink look for uh, Tin Helm and now Tin Realm. It looks really, really cool. I'm loving this artwork. So we're at Bone Rock here. There's an enemy and a loot. We have to resolve it from left to right, so we have to fight an enemy first, and we'll check over here. And the enemy is the Bone Stalker. So we're going to go to the enemy deck. We're going to find the Bone Stalker. Let's see if we can find the Bone Stalker. There he is. And we'll place him right here. And the Bone Stalker has four health, but since we're on day one, he gets one extra health, so he has five. So we'll take our little red cube, and I'll set it on five over there on the enemy's health tracker. He does one extra damage. He's got one armor, which is good because our short bow will deal one extra damage to enemies with armor, effectively canceling out his armor. And he rewards one favor whenever he is defeated. Also, in the bottom right of the card, there is a tiny little skull. Anytime you see that, that means that an enemy is undead. If it doesn't have the skull, it means they're not undead. And the Bone Stalker's special ability says, if your attack deals zero damage to the Bone Stalker, he immediately drains one energy from you. So you don't want to miss. And now we're going to get into combat, and I'll tell you how that works. So whenever it is your turn to attack and you always attack first, unless an enemy says otherwise, some enemies will have abilities that say that they get to attack first, but otherwise the player always gets to attack first. First, before you roll your dice, you're going to decide how much energy you want to spend to add damage to your roll. So as mentioned earlier in the video, you've got these three different values. You can spend one, two, or three energy to deal different amounts of damage. So he's got five health. I think I'm going to go ahead and spend two energy. So I'm going to go down from 12 to 10, and I'm going to add five to my roll. Now, he's got the one armor, but our short bow deals one extra damage to enemies with armor, so that cancels it out. So we're going to add five to whatever we roll. So then you're going to roll your two six-sided dice, and you're going to subtract the lower number from the higher number. So let's go ahead and roll. And if you roll doubles, you miss. Definitely don't want to roll doubles. Okay, cool. So we got a three and a one. So you're going to subtract the one from the three. So that is two. And then you add your damage to it that you spent your energy for. So five plus two is seven. And that is enough to kill the Bone Stalker. So we've defeated the Bone Stalker. And now we gain favor as listed on his card. One. So we gain one favor. So we'll take our little clear cube and we'll put it on the one on our favor tracker. And that's it. Had we not killed the Bone Stalker just now, if he would have had any health left, it would have been the Bone Stalker's turn to retaliate and attack us, and it essentially works the same way. The Bone Stalker would have rolled two dice, and you would subtract the lower number from the higher number. In this case, it would have been one, and then you would add the strength value or the little attack value right here to whatever they rolled. So he would have did two damage to us right there, which would have moved our health down by two on the health tracker. But fortunately for us, we were able to take him down in one hit, and he is dead. So now, back to Bone Rock. We have destroyed the Bone Stalker that was creeping around Bone Rock. That is very fitting, by the way. And there's a treasure chest. Let's creak that bad boy open. And what do we find inside? We look over here at the second card, and it says an elixir. So we're going to go ahead in the loot deck, and we're going to find the elixir. And there it is right there. So the elixir says, you may discard this card from play to gain one health and three energy. That is a very powerful loot. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our inventory and hang on to that for whenever we need it. We can discard it to gain a health and three energy. So we are done with the bone rock. We're ready to move on. So we're going to discard the result card over here in the discard pile. And now we can place bone rock either on the right or the left of the lost spring. So it doesn't matter where we place it. We can't connect any of these, um, these little symbols to make a full symbol and move on the map. But I am noticing that there is a skull on this side. And rather than keep that open, I'm going to block that off. So we're going to go on the left side right here and put that down like this. And then we'll move further in. So we've got woods over here. we got the forest and we've got mountains over here. If we do the vile shores, we can match our mountains up and move on the track. So we're going to do it. So we're going to, 
There is a tra there's a trap and an enemy, but I really want to start moving. So we're going to do it. We're going to head to the Vile Shores. Might not be the best idea, but we are going to do it. We're going to go ahead to the Vile Shores. And then you take the next card in the Exploration Deck, flip it to its result side, like so. And now we go through the symbols. We've got a trap symbol. So you look at the trap symbol here. Two energy. So we lose two energy. Ouch. That is pretty painful. And then there is an enemy here. And it is a Skullum. Uh-oh. I already know what this is. Dudes, the Skullum is ridiculous so this is i'm fairly certain the strongest enemy in the game he's got five health three attack three armor he rewards two favor he is undead and his special ability says if you miss your attack against the skullum you must take two damage immediately this dude doesn't mess around he is brutal and dudes that artwork is crazy cool that is super super cool looking right there Awesome. All right. So we got to fight the skull. He's got five health. It's day one. So he's got six health because you add the day to the total health listed on the enemy card, of course. And as mentioned, we get to attack first. So um, let's see. How much energy do we want to spend? I think I'm going to spend three to deal seven extra damage. So we're going to go ahead from eight to five. We're already getting low-ish on energy. And we're going to deal an extra seven damage. He has armor. And we have the short bow. So we're dealing one extra damage. So that's eight. And he's got three armor. So we're going to subtract three from the eight is five. So we're going to add five to whatever we roll. Please don't miss. We didn't. Oh my gosh. Good. Okay. So we rolled a, uh, a four and a three. And four minus three is one. And then we add the five extra damage to it, which is six. And that is exactly enough to take down the Skullum. Whew. That was close. I did not want to get hit by that guy. And now we get our two favor from him. So we'll move up to three on the favor tracker. And that is it. We're done with the Vile Shores. Let's get the heck out of here. So we're going to take our result card, put it in the discard pile, and then we'll take the Vile Shores and we'll place it somewhere on our tableau. Now, here's an important note. You cannot take a location card and put it in between uh, cards that are already down. It can only ever go to the far right or the far left. So since we have a mountain here and a mountain here, it's a no-brainer. We're going to go ahead and set the Vile Shores next to the Lost Spring. That creates a mountain. And now we get to move one space on the map up here. Finally. Okay. We're moving toward closer to Oaken's Helm, at least. We're getting a little bit closer. And now we can we keep continuing on like this. So we're going to go ahead and decide. Do we want to go to High Nest? Um, there's a mountain on this side and forest. So we could match up the forest. So we're going to go. There's an enemy, but there's also a campsite, which is good. So we're going to head to High Nest. Flip this card. And the enemy is the Bane Spider. So we'll go ahead and find the Bane Spider in the enemy deck. There he is. And the Bane Spider has four health plus one for the day that we're on. So he goes up to five health. He's got one attack, zero armor. So our short bow isn't going to do any extra damage. And he gives one favor. And his special ability says you gain one poison every time the Bane Spider successfully hits during combat. Yikes. Now remember, if your health ever equals your poison, you lose the game and you keep track of your poison with this little green cube. So every time you take poison damage, you move it up by the number of poison you take on your health meter. And again, if you ever if you ever have equal to or more poison than health, you lose. So we don't want to get too much poison on us because that's going to lower our, our, our maximum health threshold. So we definitely don't want that. So we're going to try to take this guy down in one fell swoop. We get to attack first. So I'm going to spend two energy, I think. Yep, I'm going to spend two energy, and we're going to do plus five damage to him, and he has no armor. So plus five to whatever we roll. And we rolled five minus two is three, plus the five is eight. We decimated the spider. Let's go. The Bane Spider is dead, and we gain one favor, so we are up to four. And now we can chill out at the campsite at the High Nest after working up a sweat fighting that Bane Spider. Um, what do we want to do here? Do we want to rest? Or do we want to search for food? You know, we're getting pretty low on energy. So even though I'm at full health, I think I'm going to rest. That way we can gain back one energy. Because remember, when you rest, you gain two health and one energy. So we'll go ahead and rest and get that energy back. Put this card over here in the discard pile. And then I'm going to take our high nest and put it over here to the left of the bone rock. And we have matched up two forest symbols. So we get to move another space on the map, just like so. We're getting kind of close to the end of day one here. So we've got water on this side and water on this side. And dudes, we got water right here. We're going to the old ferry. Unfortunately, we're going to have to fight again. We're doing a lot of fighting and our energy is getting low. So again, this is cool because it makes you 
uh, makes you really think about your decisions here. Is it worth moving on the map? As far as conserving energy goes, it's probably not <laughs> worth moving on the map, but we're going to do it anyway. So we got the old fairy. What are we fighting? We're fighting a crawl bone. Let's go, dude. That's this dude right here on the play mat. That's such a cool looking enemy. And uh, apparently Jason thought so too, enough to put him on the mat, which is really cool. So we've got the crawl bone. He's got four health, plus one for the day. He's got five health. He does zero extra damage. He's got two armor, so our short bow is going to do plus one. He rewards one favor. He is undead. And it says you lose one energy every time the crawl bone successfully hits during combat. So we definitely don't want that. We get to attack first. Um, how much energy do we want to spend? I think I'm going to spend... I think I'm going to spend two... Yeah, so we're going to do 5 plus 1 from our short bow since he has armor, which is 6, minus his 2 armor is 4. So we're doing plus 4 to our roll. See what we get. Cool. So we got 1 plus 4 is 5. That is exactly enough to take him down. We're getting pretty lucky with that, and we gain 1 favor. We are un Oop, that's my energy. We are unscathed so far, guys. We're up to 5 favor, and there's also a random event at the Old Fairy. And it is the Wanderer. So we're going to go ahead and grab our reference cards and search for the Wanderer. This is cool. There's a brand new card in Tin Realm. Love the art. It says, you may trade any loot card with the Wanderer for any available trappings card. So we could actually take our trappings card from outside of the game and trade him one of our loot for a trapping, which is pretty cool. But since we're getting so low on energy, I'm about to chug that elixir. So I think I'm going to pass on that because it says, or there's another option. Or you may ask the Wanderer for directions, which will move you one space on the map cards. Let's do that. Let's ask the Wanderer for directions and move up one space on the map card. Heck yes, dude. We're now on to the second map card. We are getting closer to Oakenselm. Let's go. We're going to take this card, put it in the discard pile. We'll take the old fairy. We're going to set it over here on our tableau. And we have matched up two water symbols here. So we're going to get to move another space. Now check this out. We're moving to this space with the campsite. Anytime you move through a space with a campsite or a water drop, you activate it the same as you would as if you were resolving it on one of the exploration cards. So we're on a campsite, so we're going to get to either rest or search for food. I'm going to rest so that we can gain another energy, and I'm also going to drink the elixir that says you may discard this card from play to gain one health and three energy. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll discard that card. We'll gain one health, but we're already at full health. And then more importantly, we're going to gain three energy and go up to six energy just like that. Now, we're on the last location of day one here, guys. we got the dark pool. There's a mountain on this side and a mountain on this side. And guys, we're getting really lucky. There's a mountain over here on the high nest. So we're going to resolve it. We are fighting a lot of enemies, but we're booking it down the path here to get to Oak and Selm. And let's see what happens at this last location. The enemy is the Brigand. So we're going to go ahead, search for the Brigand. Where are you, sir? There he is. The Brigand has four health, five with the plus one from the day, and he does one extra damage. He's got one armor and one favor, and he says, Brigands always attack first. You may avoid combat with the Brigand by discarding a loot or trappings card. I don't really want to do that, you know what I mean? We could use our Raven to make him skip his attack, but I don't really want to do that. He doesn't seem to be that strong of an enemy. Not too worried about it. I think we're going to... Well, we could do this once per dungeon level, but we have to spend a food. I don't think we're going to do it. If this was a stronger enemy, I would probably consider using the Raven, but in this case, we'll just take the hit. So the Brigand is going to go ahead and attack first. We're going to roll for him. And he did 4 minus 3 is 1, plus his 1 attack is 2 damage. So we're going to lose 2 health, and we finally got hit. Okay, we get to retaliate here. He's got 5 health. He's got that 1 armor, and our short bow is going to cancel that out because we're going to deal 1 damage since, since he has armor. So, you know, I think I'm going to go ahead, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to spend two. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to spend two, and we're going to add plus five to our roll. And good thing, we did one plus the five is six. That is enough to take him down. It wouldn't have been had I only spent one, and we get the one favor. So we go up to six favor on the favor tracker, just like that. We'll take this card, put it over there in the discard pile, and then we'll take our dark pool, and we'll put it over here on this side of the tableau. And we've got two matching mountain symbols, so we get to move another space on the map just like that. Now, guys, that is the end of one round or one day in Tin Realm. So what happens now is you scoop up your tableau, set it over here with the rest of the cards for the exploration deck, and then you move the sundial up by one. So now it is day two. So now all the enemies are going to get plus two health. 
You also have to eat one of your food in between each day. So we're gonna go down to one on our food from two, and then you shuffle up the exploration deck, and you're gonna place the cards with the illustration side face up after you shuffle it, and you do it all over again. And you keep going through the game in this manner until you either run out of health, or if you get to the end of day seven and you haven't reached the finish at Oakenselm, or if you reach the finish at Oakenselm, in which case you win the game. So we're gonna go ahead and shuffle this up and we're gonna finish this game out, guys. That's basically it for the tutorial. You now know how to play Tin Realm. And now let's see if we can finish this out and make it all the way to Oakenselm. Here we go, guys. This is the Lost Spring. There's a lot of good stuff there. We're gonna go. So we're gonna go ahead and take the Lost Spring. We're gonna set it here. And then we're gonna flip the next card to the result side. First things first, we have a random event. Ooh, it is the Labyrinth. So we're gonna go ahead and take out the Labyrinth. And the Labyrinth says, you find yourself lost in a dark cavernous maze. Spend two food to escape. Ooh, that's pretty brutal. If you do not have enough food, you waste the day looking for an exit. Advance the sundial tracker one day forward. That's very brutal. But fortunately guys, we're the Wood Elf. It says she may also spend four favor to escape the Labyrinth. So we're gonna go from six favor down to two and we're gonna escape the labyrinth for free, which is great for us because we didn't have the two food to spend and that would have moved up the sundial tracker to three and I definitely don't want that. So that is really cool. Her ability paid off and uh, she finds her way out of the labyrinth with ease. Next up is the water drop symbol. So we're gonna go ahead and roll the dice. We need a five or a six. We got it dudes, let's go. We got two food now. And then there's also a campsite I'm gonna use that to rest. So we're gonna gain two health, going back up to full health, and we're gonna gain one energy going up to five, just like that, and that is it. We're gonna take this card, place it in the discard pile, and the Lost Spring will go on our tableau up this way. Uh, it's worth noting, we've got a forest over here and a mountain, and we don't have either of those on the obelisk, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and skip the obelisk, and we're gonna to head to the dark pool instead which has an enemy and a water drop symbol. So the enemy is the Bone Stalker. Let's go ahead and find the Bone Stalker. I like how there's so many skeleton themed enemies in Tin Realm too. I think that is really, really cool. All right, so we got the Bone Stalker. He's got four health. And now since we're on day two, he gets plus two health. So he's got a maximum six health to start with. He does one extra damage. He's got one armor. He rewards one uh, favor. He's undead. Then it says, if your attack deals zero damage to the Bone Stalker, he immediately drains one energy from you. We definitely don't want that. We're getting low on energy. So we need to take this dude down. I'm going to spend two energy. We're going to go down to three. Yikes. We're doing plus five. He has one armor. So our short bow is going to deal one extra damage. So that cancels out his armor. So we're doing plus five to our roll. And for the first time in the game, we have rolled doubles, which means we miss. That sucks. If your attack deals zero damage to the Bone Stalker, he immediately drains one energy from you. Yikes, dude. So he drains one energy from us. That is brutal. And now the Bone Stalker is going to retaliate, dudes. Let's see what he does. He does six minus four is two, plus his one attack is three damage. Yikes. So we go down from 11 to eight. All right. Uh, it's our turn to retaliate. We're getting really, really low on energy. And it's worth noting. Um, if you ever want to not spend energy to attack, or if you run out of energy, the, you can also do an unarmed attack or a punch attack, which will inflict one damage to the enemy and it ignores their armor. So that's also an option that you always have. Um, I think I'm not gonna do that now, especially since we have some energy. I'm just gonna spend our last two energy. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be the same thing as last time. We're doing plus five damage because our short bow is canceling out his armor. Let's see what we do. We rolled doubles again, no, dude, disaster, disaster. We missed, he would drain our energy, but joke's on him, dude. I don't got no energy for you to drain, bro. He's gonna retaliate. What does he do? He does one, plus his one is two damage. And guys, I hate to say it, this might be the end of this Tin Helm tutorial playthrough video here pretty soon. We have no energy left. So uh, yeah, we're gonna do what I was just talking about and do one unarmed damage to the Bone Stalker, bringing him down to five. Yikes, this is not looking good. He is going to retaliate here. Let's see how much he does. Oh, baby. He does six minus one is five, plus his one is six. And that's how much health we have and we're dead. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 realm. <laughs> there it is. Round of applause for the Wood Elf Ranger right there, guys. 
That's perfect, guys. There it is, dudes. As you can see, the game is pretty difficult, dudes. Even playing on the easy mode with the fewest number of nodes on the map, that is amazing. I'm loving the difficulty of the game. Obviously, I haven't learned all of the cards yet and the little tricks and stuff, and I love that, dude. I'm loving that I have a brand new game to learn and play through, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy the ride because there's going to be plenty more playthroughs of Tin Realm coming in the very near future. And uh, yeah, I hope you pick up your own copy of the game. You can go over to thegamecrafter.com to pick up your copy of Tin Realm and this mat if you so choose. This is not a sponsored video, by the way, but that's where you got to go if you want to pick up the game. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up like button. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel, guys. Hit that red subscribe button and click the bell icon next to it so you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. And I upload videos just like this all the time. And as mentioned, more Tin Realm is coming very soon. We'll be doing just some straight up playthroughs of the game. Cannot wait to get into that. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Jason Glover. You are amazing, bro. Thank you so much for making these awesome games for us to share and play and enjoy together. Uh, can't thank you enough. So guys, until the next one, have a great one, everybody, and I'll see you guys in the next video.